believe you can fly. Boy, I am so sick of everyone assuming I'm good at basketball because I'm African American. <laughs> Go, Carl! Go, Carl! It's my birthday! It's my birthday! Three! <laughs> good old Simpsons. But wait, before you get too excited and create a new meme, because we know you millennials are lazy and addicted to social media today we're exploring the topic of stereotypes what are they and how are they formed is there anything positive about positive stereotyping and what can we do about them both from the perspective of the person who holds a stereotype or the one who is affected by it but first un poquito de contexto Hi everyone, my name is Luis and welcome to another Intercool video. For starters, we need to make a fundamental distinction between few confusing terms. There are more, but let's briefly focus on this one because they are sometimes used interchangeably, but most of the time just plainly misused. We're talking about prejudice, stereotype and discrimination. And they are clearly linked, but they imply very different things. A prejudice is an unjustifiable negative attitude toward an art group or members of that art group. It is not based on experience, instead it's a prejudgment generated outside actual experience that can take the form of disliking, fear, anger, discomfort, disgust or even hatred. While prejudice refers to biased thinking and attitude, discrimination consists of biased actions against members of a group and can be based on gender, age, race, ethnicity and many other factors. In these terms, racism is just another form of discrimination, but there are many other factors and characteristics people can be discriminated against, including social status, height, beauty, pretty much anything. Or, well, people can just be accepted the way they are and treated equally, just saying. All right, what is a stereotype then? From the principles of social psychology, the ABC model determines that every attitude has three main components, A for affective, B for behavioral and C for cognitive. In our case, stereotypes fall under the cognitive part, whilst prejudice and discrimination fall under the affective and behavioral parts respectively. At this point, I don't have to give any examples of stereotype as probably most of us are already experts. To prove my point, complete the following sentences together with me. French people are, Italians are, Latinos are, Arabs, Americans, Indians, Asians, Africans, Black people, you get a point. Don't feel so bad about it, you probably didn't create those biases yourself. Stereotypes are oversimplified generalizations about groups of people. In The Nature of Prejudice, the American psychologist Gordon Allport suggested that the categorization of people into groups is adaptive. As he puts it, it is also necessary for us to use social categorization, social filing system, to reduce the complexity of the social world. To put it in simple terms, stereotyping is a result of the laziness of your mind. Well, I know you're not lazy, but your mind is. It just cannot cope with all the information around and it has evolved in a way that tends to group things and generalize so that it can make quick and snappy decisions and judgments. Stereotypes can be based on pretty much any characteristics, but if you follow this channel, you can guess we'll be focusing more in the ones based on people's origin, background, environment, etc. Stereotypes are often negative, usually toward other groups, such as when members of a dominant racial group suggest that a subordinate racial group is stupid, lazy or incompetent. One of its key features is that stereotypes is a generalization that doesn't take individual differences into account. But where do they come from? Well, a stereotype is a bit like matter. It is not created or destroyed. It is only transformed. Stereotypes are recycled from subordinate groups that have been assimilated into society and are reused to describe newly subordinate groups. For example, many stereotypes that are used to characterize black and Asians in America today were used earlier in American history to characterize Irish or Eastern European immigrants. Stereotypes attributed to ethnic groups can be different depending on the place and they change in content over time. For example, ask a person in America and Africa their stereotypes about Germans, Jews, Arab, Europeans and Asians and the answers are going to be slightly different. 
Despite not being based on actual experience, people oftentimes try to justify stereotypes by asserting that they have proved the truthiness of their belief through experiences and things that they have seen themselves with their own eyes. What happens most of the time is confirmation bias, also called you find what you're looking for. And you may come and say, well, yeah, but there are also positive stereotypes like this and that. All right, let's explore it then. Positive stereotype refers to a subjectively favorable belief about a social group to the point that can actually be considered a compliment or even a praise. Some common examples of positive stereotypes are Asians are good at math, African Americans are great athletes, Latin Americans or South American, depending on what part of the world are you from are good at dancing. However, positive stereotypes can have a positive or negative effect on their targets depending on how the positive stereotype is stated, who is stating the positive stereotype and in what cultural context it is presented. In their stereotype content model, Fiske and colleagues provided evidence that being positively stereotyped in one domain typically leads to being correspondingly negatively stereotyped in another domain. For example, Asian Americans are positively stereotyped as competent, but then negatively stereotyped as cold. Black African Americans are normally stereotyped positively as athletic, but then negatively stereotyped as incompetent or unintelligent. Spaniards are sociable but lazy, Germans are organized but lacking any sense of humor, and the list goes on and on. To make things worse instinctively, positive stereotypes might signal to the target that negative stereotypes are not far behind. So can positive stereotypes be beneficial? Yeah, actually they can, when they are subtle. Being associated with a group that is positively stereotyped in a domain, for instance academics, arts or sport, can lead to higher performance if one is led to think about its group membership but not the specific stereotype. Also consider that the ambiguity of positive stereotype causes that when encountered over time they might come to be seen as a form of microaggression. Despite what we seem to perceive from the media, actual violence against other groups is fortunately rare. Stereotypes nevertheless influence people's lives in a variety of ways and can have a pervasive, often pernicious influence in our response to others. Stereotypes impact our academic performance, the careers that we choose to follow, our experiences at work, and even the amount of money that we are paid for the work we do. In some cases, stereotypes may lead to what is called stereotype threat. This concept refers to the concern that one's action may fulfill a negative cultural stereotype of one's group. Such concerns may paradoxically lead to fulfillment of those stereotypes due to performance decrements that are caused by knowledge of cultural stereotypes. Even the positive ones, we may assume that they will have a positive impact on the individuals affected. The fact is, positive stereotypes can make people hold unreasonably high expectations on individuals belonging to a certain stereotyped group. Let's just say the stereotype is Latinos are good at dancing and you are Latino and you cannot dance. Dance, how does it make you feel the fact that you cannot be fulfilling that stereotype? Is there anything we can do about stereotypes at all? Yes, we can. We all call stereotypes. You stereotype. Oh, easy bro, easy. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, not particularly you. Okay, so can I continue watching? Sure. All right, go on, go on. Thank you. What I mean is we cannot just erase stereotypes altogether, but we can definitely influence how they affect us and others. We have already mentioned that stereotypes are more transformed than created. Another point is that people are socialized to adopt pretty much the same stereotypes. Some psychologists believe that although stereotypes can be absorbed at any age, they are usually acquired in early childhood under the influence of parents, teachers, peers and the media. If stereotypes are defined by social values, then stereotypes only can change as per changes in social values. One important thing to realize is just because someone holds a stereotype, it doesn't mean that she or he is evil by nature. Remember, we are all biased. But if you really want to do something about it, from the perspective of the one who holds a stereotype, first admit that you have those biases. It's okay. 
What you do next is what really matters. Keep those biases in mind and take steps to correct them. Expose yourself to different experiences. Raise awareness of biases and have a conversation with someone. Ask an art group individual about what stereotypes they hold against your group. Check if you fit those stereotypes and most importantly, how do you feel about it and how would another person feel in the same situation. From the perspective of one who is being affected by a stereotype, build your own sense of self, understand yourself and your identity. Demand respect and open communication and you have been affected negatively and you don't know how to cope with it. If necessary, seek professional help. And for positive stereotyping, why not just compliment directly an individual instead of positively stereotyping a group? There's really no point of proving or refuting the truthiness of a stereotype. Its mere existence is more than sufficient to impact people's attitudes and behavior. Okay, just to recap. A stereotype is a positive or negative belief held about the members of a group and it's a cognition bias, whilst prejudice is an attitude and discrimination is an action. Stereotypes are not dangerous because they exist, but because they can become a substitute for an observation and misinterpretation of cultural identity. We cannot eliminate stereotypes altogether as they are part of human cognition, but we can understand them, we can be aware of them, and we can work on changing how they affect us and how they affect others. There are many examples of stereotypes, most of them negative, but it's not stereotypes itself that damages others and us, it's our unwillingness to rethink our own beliefs and attitudes. Remember, a stereotype might say much more about the person that holds a stereotype than the one that is being stereotyped. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time. Like the video, share it, and I will see you next time.